Dzień dobry państwu. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Ja nie wiedziałem, że mam chwalić, proszę państwa, więc nie będę musiał na bieżąco weryfikować moją prezentację. Well, I will perhaps add a few comments, words of praise about uh, about Krakow. I hope that you're going to agree with me what I say about the activities taken in this city. Jacek Stempien is my name. I would like to say a few words about what is not easy to convey in words because I will be speaking about something that actually is not visible, which might be a bit hard. But I do hope that the situation is going to, to change and it will be possible for me to speak about something that actually is of great interest and what has been implemented already because now we are just starting with our monitoring program we will see what is going to happen later hopefully full implementation will occur sooner or later what i would like to present to you ladies and gentlemen results directly from our program for environment protection against uh, electromagnetic fields it was uh, presented here in the city council professor mikua Dr. Yolanta Kaszuba, Dr. Machowski and myself, we are the authors of the program. The focus basically here was to show a certain perspective what in our view should be done in the city of Krakow so that we not only create a safer environment for, for our residents against electromagnetic fields but focus was rather on information informing about the current situation and I would actually like to avoid a certain tendency where I would speak about a threat about uh, what has to be done well basically what we want to start with is to create a, a system of control just like in the case of different types of activities where control is needed the same goes for electromagnetic fields uh, their emissions also has to be controlled if there is no control then first of all some regulations might unfortunately be broken and additionally there is some unrest among among people who do not really know what, what happens what are the parameters of the operation of um, different uh, data wireless transmission systems ignorance lack of knowledge leads to unrest and sometimes very ner nervy reactions a very broad comprehensive program as you can see in this slide we do some legal analysis analysis of impact on health of electromagnetic fields we compare uh, the current regulations uh, in, in Poland and in the European Union this is at the same time a program where I'm not going to go into detail because it's impossible it's a very comprehensive program as I said and I don't know all the details so I'm not going to speak about health actually here but about other areas I'm a technical guy engineer and I will focus on the technical side on measurements made and I will speak about what and how can be measured so that we have information about what surrounds us what electromagnetic fields uh, are located around what are we exposed to that's what I'm interested in so for this reason I'm going to focus I'm sorry again I will focus on three aspects so first of all the monitoring system PEM monitoring system in Krakow but then it is related to other subjects so first of all systems related to individual measurements that are made made here in Krakow by, by, by the city council and of course individual residents using the equipment provided by the city council and then there are attempts to create a special information system that will provide residents with information about parameters re related to the different base stations or other sources of electromagnetic radiation so information for anyone interested in the city and outside let me start with something that is not typically related to monitoring but I start with a certain proposal we have made it's about creating a map of radiation sources so that map where it would be possible to find information about numbers of different uh, stations in 
Krakow because we are speaking, as you know, our focus is Krakow. And then additionally, in more detail, the map should show the different electromagnetic fields around those base stations. In most cases, such type of information is impossible to access. It's possible to get some technical information about the parameters regarding base stations. But in most cases, this is something impossible to access for, for average residents. So it's difficult, of course, for residents later to, even if they have this information, to interpret this information and to avoid errors in the interpretation of this data. So in my view, this action, and also the one related to direct monitoring of electromagnetic fields, focuses on supporting both residents and operators at the same time. The operators who, in my view, should, should be very happy that someone wants to present uh, how reliable their work uh, is done. So the system we are proposing is going to be complemented by new elements. The, it takes some time and step by step we are creating the information base. The information already here in the City Council and owned by the City Council is not complete yet. Plenty of information is still missing about uh, different aspects of the work of base stations. Sometimes information is not complete, sometimes mixed up. Different parameters are presented by different institutions, by uh, companies that uh, construct those base stations. There is quite a mess, so for this reason it is actually even more difficult to have access to, to clear information. Again, I'm sorry for the colors, as you can see, my, unfortunately my slides are not very legible. Here it is a list of different parameters that we are interested in. It's not because those parameters are sensitive in a special way, we simply collected them because Apart from direct monitoring system, we also suggest a certain simulation base is created generally on electromagnetic fields. Only some, some tools of simulation can truly functionally uh, be used to, to create such an information base about, about fields in real life. It's extremely difficult, it's only possible after a number of different measurements made, which sometimes are hardly possible to see the real situation. So those parameters I have listed here, those that we would like to put in the database, these are the parameters that should belong to the first uh, version, should be part of the first version of radiation. Then there should be another fun function, more functionalities, information on the different uh, planes related to the radiation. What you can see here in this slide, this is the current situation. This is the website you can enter, a website owned by the City Council, the so-called observatory. An excellent, very good quality website, I must say, but it shows actually here just some basic information about base stations with classical information, those arrows, the arrows show the direction of uh, radiation of the base stations. I think we've grown used basically to living with those stations. The information is is interesting but not full, not complete unfortunately. We would like to add some information about uh, the spatial also dimensions, not only the directions of radiations, but also theoretical additional information shown in the way I have presented here on the right hand side. It is important because if we have arrows only on the left hand side, they don't show one important aspect that is uh, quite uh, significant from our perspective. They don't show the, the result of the accumulation of uh, different uh, fields coming from different base stations or different transmitters as well. So accumulation, let's be aware of that. So very often we can see some uh, results of measurements for concrete base stations, but it's not very often that we see an analysis that would take into account the information of the frequencies for a number of different base stations located in a given area in the city of Krakow or another town or city.
Because if, if we speak basically about uh, base stations, no one actually wants to design such stations that would go over the allowable norms. But if we have a cumulative effect, uh, close installations, nearby installations of a number of operators, this can r result in the values that will be above the thresholds that, that are considered thresholds according to Polish legislation. So that's our proposal to add this functionality to the system. The next point is about uh, direct monitoring. Monitoring, that is to give us information about what actually happens in the public space, what happens with regard to electromagnetic fields. Well, this is an area that is very complex, impossible to solve perhaps. The reason is it's quite simple. It is not possible for us to have a map of the fields from real life uh, measurements, just comparable to temperature, for instance, in, in Krakow. Because if we measure temperature at the beginning of a street, if it's 30 degrees uh, at the end of the street, it would most probably be 30 degrees centigrade as well. But for electromagnetic fields, of course, it's not correct. This type of approach is impossible. So even if we measure the value of the field at a given point in place, a hundred 10 or even 10 meters away, the fields can be completely different and this will be the result not really of of an additional source of radiation. Or this could be the case, but sometimes it's about uh, accumulation, about reflections and different distances, everything related to the physical features of, of radiation. So basically we would like to create a system that would be a dynamic one. It would be based on a number of different types of measurements that should have complementary nature and as a result we should have uh, dynamic information and the ability to react dynamically to a situation in a given place in the city. Well, I would actually prefer to, to have another system, quite different system, because it would be good if, if we if we were to say we should force all operators to have a monitoring station next to their base station and make the results public. This would be perhaps the best solution. All the requirements would be fulfilled regarding the reliability of information. But unfortunately it's not the case, so we have to build step by step uh, our system with the, the equipment we have at our disposal. Unfortunately it, it requires time and it's quite costly at the same time. As for the situation as it is now, what we have in, in the city of Krakow, we've got three types of different devices for making measurements. At the moment as they are, they are test devices basically, there are just a few units. So the exposure measuring devices for individual measurements, then we've got one mobile uh, measurement station for dynamic measurements. That's the way it, it looks like. Up to 6 gigahertz, it's mobile, can be mounted on top of a car, as you can see here. Such measurements are possible. And then we've got two fixed stations, so-called uh, selective stations, that can be used to identify sources of radiation. They can give us information about uh, the level of uh, radiation, its frequency, but uh, also information about the sources of um, radiation that are registered at a given location. This is just the beginning, the beginning to, to create a system that we are aiming at. These are solutions of, of one individual company. It doesn't really matter what who the producer is, but those three types of devices are important. Individual, dynamic and fixed measurements. And fixed to it is those additional functionalities. It's uh, fixed but it's also dynamic at the same time. It's possible to basically quite quickly move such a monitoring station from place to place and uh, take uh, new measurements. Uh, usual you get more solid information than using the the other simpler devices and again it's a, it's a process that is going to have a number of stages so we've got a few devices at the moment not adequate to cover the 
the needs in, in Krakow. In Italy, Professor, I understand you've got such systems, uh, regional systems with uh, thousands of monitoring stations, I understand. Uh, so it's an excellent uh, solution and uh, I understand they're quite popular with, with, with local residents and we would like to have a similar system. We've got the four ones. I mentioned three types, as I said, four devices that we have of three types and we are doing our best to, to find out more about the technical uh, challenges related to such system. And in stage one of the introduction we've got here information that they're going to be used to create a monitoring system using the system that is uh, currently used at the Krakow Business and Technological School, AGH. Two monitoring stations of this type have been installed there at our university. We also use uh, this uh, dynamic station that I mentioned before and hopefully this equipment is going to be used so that later we can expand uh, the whole system. There is a website now available through our uh, university. Well, honestly, it's a very basic one, so I don't really invite you to visit us. It's a, just a test website. Uh, there are many problems that we discover ourselves now and then. You can get just some basic information here, some basic information about measurements that have been made. Well, I can repeat what I said a year ago. I'd like to, again, thank our Alma Mater, our university. Uh, the measurements have shown that uh, the frequencies are not exceeded in the territory of the university. That's very good. But of course, we, we are learning all the time and uh, what is needed is, is more, more work. The next slide shows uh, frequencies for 1700, 1800 megahertz. So mobile telephony here in this case, and uh, we see here information about electromagnetic fields in uh, volt per meter, about also the changes, uh, daily changes, analyzed within 24 hours. Well, in general, this is what I wanted to say about what we have already and what we will soon have. Can I now perhaps draw your attention to the fact that when we speak about monitoring, it's impossible to speak about equipment, devices only. Well, it would be easier for me to speak about the devices. As a technical specialist, it's easier for me. If someone asks me about legal issues or health issues, it's more difficult for me, of course. But when we speak about monitoring, we also need to talk about uh, the whole spectrum of different elements that make the, the health system complete and able to provide residents with the type of information that they require. I think you know very well, as the mayor of the city of Krakow spoke on this, the whole program is at the stage of public consultations. There are uh, replies prepared to a number of different uh, comments and reservations, sometimes quite radical ones. In the near future, I think the, those replies will be formulated and made public. And as for the future of this program, well, it's not up to us, but I do hope that to a certain extent extent at least this program will be further implemented. But that's not the end of it. I don't want to stop here. I wouldn't like to just give you some basic facts about uh, the program. Wondering what to tell you this year, I thought that perhaps uh, the best reservation and, uh, that I found in the comments, the, the one that was not very often mentioned was about education. So I would like to now give you some information, trying to educate you as, as, I, as I teach at my university. So some pieces of information, some education about certain aspects regarding requirements of, of law and some norms and the measurements that are quite demanding from the technical side, as I said earlier. Let me start with something that I found quite striking during one of the meetings uh, during the consultation period. There was a, quite a general question. Why in general to measure at all? 
Well, I must say, I started thinking about it. It took me quite some time to, to find a good answer to why. There is no basic, I think, answer, simple answer to, to the question about why measure at all. Here are the photographs you can see, the information about the websites from which they, they come. These are just examples. I wanted to show how our approach changes here in electromagnetic fields and uh, mobile telephony. As a mobile phone, phone user, we are interested in good coverage. We want to have coverage, coverage everywhere, best possible coverage. We want to have internet access, be able to transmit data. Even somewhere high in the mountains, you want to take a picture and send it quickly. But once, look here on the right hand side, it's not a picture from Poland, actually, it's from another country. I wanted to choose a third country. Look, if we see in, in, in the neighborhood uh, so many different transmitters located at the roof of the building, although we want to have a good coverage, then we might feel not very well. Some, some unease certainly is what we feel. So one of the answers to the question about why take measurements is to know simply, to have some knowledge. This is why, for instance, we for instance, go to the doctors and uh, some t tests are made so that we know whether we are ill or not. The same goes here for, for taking the measurements. Something that might be a bit controversial perhaps for those who are against base stations, I want to say that not each base station generates excessive uh, field that is harmful for residents. I stress again, I'm a technician and if there is a good uh, uh, technical uh, information, if we have a good uh, device that operates according to legal norms, everything is correct. As a technician, simply I have to conclude that the regulations, the current regulations as they are now, they must be correct and if uh, law is adhered to, then it is possible to construct new bus stations. The second the reason why we take measurements it is to check whether everything is fine to verify simply to check that perhaps uh, in some cases the power might be excessive there might be some problems or conflicts between operators the three base stations uh, where we would have overlapping uh, radiation from three transmitters so we're looking for, for problems for difficulties for anomalies from the norm so that places where some threats perhaps could be created. Next issue, something that is extremely important here and it is the, the reason for a number of problems. The thing is that the measurements in open conditions are basically impossible to repeat. I've seen a number of different uh, reports from measurements that were taken for base stations for mobile telephony. I had many doubts in, in different cases, but I am not able to tell you that, for instance, a certain measure value, measurement value is, is wrong measured here or there, because even if this is my suspicion and I go there, I might have been 10 times higher value at that time. It does not mean that at the time of uh, measurement, sometime before, for the same station in the same location, with the same even parameters, that perhaps the earlier parameters uh, might have been correct, even if it's different. This is a serious problem. So no one is able actually to prove that uh, the measurement is incorrect if we do not participate in the measurements. So only supervision, constant supervision makes it possible for us to, to react. And the last point, because again the question about why take measurements was, was about uh, those devices, individual devices. We have to start with something, ladies and gentlemen. Very often we are under pressure, psychological pressure. Someone gets headache because there is a base station nearby and then they would think that it certainly is the reason the base station or the neighbors would say it's again their problem and certainly the problem is the radiation. But well, of course it's not quite clear that this is the reason for a headache. Measurements are needed whenever possible, so measuring devices, basic individual devices is what is needed so that we can check that perhaps it's justified or not. Our 
suspicions about the, the cause of our headache. And the next point, very difficult for me actually, very worrying, it's not the result of uh, blue light discussion, discussed earlier that I have problems sleeping at night, the measurements. 7 uh, V per meter or 0 0.1 watts per square meter, the regulations of the Polish Minister of Environment from the 30th of October 2003. And in the second annex, we find information that the measurements of frequency, are, it's done measuring the, the frequency of the electric uh, pieces or parts of uh, the uh, the field. Very strange, absurd a little bit, but over so many years this has not been corrected actually, because 0 0.1 watt per square meter is not the same as 7 volt per meter. There's a big difference here. Why has not, hasn't it been corrected? Well, my technical approach actually comes into play here, and I really demand changes here. If we take measurements, frequencies, say we got 6.8 volt per meter, if this measurement has been made by an accredited lab, we will find out that this is the lab, the, the result that is within the norm. And yes, this is correct, it's within the norm. But what if we, if possible at all, of course, if we wanted to change uh, the units, the same measuring device, and then suddenly, once we change it, if we have a look at uh, the second value, we will be outside this norm in watts per square meter. A very strange case. So for me, it requires uh, immediate correction. I'm not saying which of the two values is correct, maybe later on that, whether 7 volt or 1 watt, 0 0.1 watt, but they have to be the same if there has to be a relationship between both, and they're quite different at the moment. This is a simple mathematical calculation here. Otherwise, there might be some, some doubts, but not here. But there is more to it. The next issue, mentioned also earlier by Mr. Lees, it's about the way in which permits are issued for new base stations. Please note here, ladies and gentlemen, a certain important aspect. It's just an accidental uh, part of the map. Maybe not truly accidental, but in a way it's justified. Um, map of a uh, number of streets in Krakow, and you can see a number of arrows run actually parallel to the uh, streets or along the street. <coughs> Again, a bit strange. After this, it says norms and maybe tricks I should add. There are some, some, some tricks here because what are the conditions actually for uh, deciding that there is no important impact of the installation for the environment? It's about those main axes along the, the road, to run, along the axis uh, and along the road. Very often, those directions are chosen in such a way that um, there are no buildings, for instance, along those lines. What might be shocking uh, also. I heard once from a person representing an operator, they said that they do not want such, such, such tests because the whole procedure is very difficult, taking into account all the different aspects apart from the, the emissions, electric, electric fields, because all the papers, uh, the, the bureaucracy can make such installations extremely difficult. And from the point of view of, of residents interested in the frequency here, I'm basically interested in, in one aspect of the whole initial uh, impact assessment uh, report, whether a permit is issued or not here, whether there is an impact on the environment uh, or not. So what I want to have is the full uh, information on the emissions for the in the environment. There is another regulation which actually says it makes it clear that you have to focus on emissions from individual sources of radiation, and it's only a full report that can result in having a full analysis, also taking into account already existing sources of radiation. That's what I would like to have. 
so again overlapping fields because basically any company that uh, installs new stations they do this type of analysis no one actually designs a base station any transmission system actually no one does it without such analysis where they would check actually what happens around what is the impact of other installations around and to, to ensure the good quality for, for for clients so simply there are such uh, analyses but they are not available to the general public I would like to change that and next slide here look a photograph again from from the internet I don't want to mention here any, any local examples but this is a fairly new transmitter and have a look at the number of cables here and again is it just an individual transmitter or the whole system how many transmitters sometimes four sometimes five sometimes ten actually separate transmitters and over the recent years there has been a change in the approach to this problem. A few years ago, if we were to have a look at the documents in, in which uh, uh, operators want to construct new base stations, you would find information uh, azimuth 40 degrees uh, and the number of watts of power. But uh, today there would be four or five individual transmitters uh, within one installation and again this is related to uh, uh, the, this uh, power of 20 kilowatt which is the, the barrier when the full report has to be uh, presented as a, a device that has a potential impact on, on the environment a theoretical example again and this I think this is the reason why sometimes uh, local residents react in, in a negative way. If people compare the way their base stations look like, those located uh, nearby, if they have a look at technical documents 10 years ago, 800 watts, one direction, and then perhaps six months later there is a growth two kilowatt perhaps one direction and today such stations can have five six dif different uh, uh, different different directions uh, just uh, below 20 kilowatts so the question that comes to your mind for local residents uh, around such base stations they are wondering what is the growth in the uh, magnetic fields uh, and what is their impact now for me it is impossible again in a theoretical way to give a clear answer but sometimes if, uh, if people see the different stages of the development of base stations in different locations people are worried certainly that you basically have the same parameters the same uh, location the same height uh, at which uh, the devices are installed although it looks like the power goes up by a hundred percent still the uh, the data concerning uh, electromagnetic fields does not change much and this can be worried I'm not really worried I'm not really surprised that that people are worried one more technical issue as for the measurements the way they are made a difficult aspect difficult to understand for many but at the same time it shows a certain problem related to the current uh, regulations in the regulation of the Ministry of Environment from 2003 there is information that if there are different uh, modes of, of work then uh, the mode that has the greatest uh, negative impact on the environment has to be used for measurements now the problem is that it's basically impossible to do so even if we can see uh, such a report from from measurements which it says that the operator has used uh, the mode uh, using maximum power actually what we have in most cases certainly well, may happen but it's not very likely it's not the maximum power that is used for, for radiation at the given, given place why it's my actually graph here it's the the easiest system of GSM mobile telephony others are much more complicated but there is a division between time and frequencies here different channels different frequencies different uh, types of transmission and each slot marked in, in different colors here this is one conversation one user one conversation if the operator gives us the maximum power here then we'd have a guarantee 
we would have a guarantee that this level here is the maximum one. But there is no guarantee that those slots are completely filled. It depends on the number of users. So basically the dynamics of the measurements, doing those measurements, taking them at different times, is only then that we have uh, real life information about the system. So one of my last slides now. I'm referring here to what Mr. Binkowski has done. Again, another reason for misunderstanding. It's a change daily, within a day, 24 hours, change in the field depending on the place where measurement is taken. A comparison from a situation 10 years ago and, and currently now from a residential area, roughly, where people live and uh, sleep. So in this part of the city, in the old days, as you can see, it's quite clear to know when the power applied was lower, when higher. Here is more, more difficult here, a number of changes, although a number of days mentioned here. But at night, here you can see low level, then what happens in the morning, in the evening, at night, and then again a fall at night. Why do I speak on this? The reason is that here you can see quite low values between what, 3 and 4 in the morning and 9 in the morning, then it goes up until 12 perhaps. And now try to show me uh, at what time uh, are measurements taken by different uh, measuring institutions. We have to take this also into account because if, if we don't take into account this daily cycle, we, what we measure is, well, we take measurements when the field is, is lower than it is in, in real life. And this is yet another aspect that I think we have to take into account, and it has to be regulated perhaps as well. Well, I don't quite know how this could be regulated. Now summing up, I've taken quite a lot of your time. Basically what I wanted to focus on, apart from presenting some uh, basic uh, assumptions concerning the monitoring system in, in Krakow, I wanted to stress that if we have a look at the measurements of electromagnetic fields and the different uh, requirements, uh, legal regulatory requirements for, for those who take those measurements, we could basically say that legislation as it is now is quite outdated. It requires changes, amendments. It has not been changing enough as fast as uh, mobile telephony has been developing. So today applying the, the regulations in force, it's very difficult to take accurate measurements and fulfill all the requirements resulting from the regulations to fulfill all the formal requirements. So in my view it is necessary to introduce some changes to, to, to regulations at the level of this state, Poland, I don't know, maybe some, some local at the level of the city of Krakow changes could be introduced because I think there are a number of inaccuracies that unfortunately have an impact on the reliability of measurements. Concluding last point here in this slide, individual measurements may or should be a good base for us to uh, contact to the local uh, authorities if uh, there are some uh, situations in which the values are exceeded, if we ask for more action. You can also use your smartphones actually. You can install very basic installations to, for making individual measurements. It's not going to be very accurate, but if there are high uh, frequencies you will be able to, to measure it. So think about actually using your smartphones also for, for, for this so that you have more information about the surrounding uh, conditions, have more information about uh, making sure that the base stations uh, fulfill all your requirements. Thank you very much for your attention.